In the last episode I released on ancient Egypt, I covered the early pharaohs of the first two dynasties. This episode will explore the great pyramid builders that came after. We will look at the pharaohs that commissioned the most spectacular construction projects in history, as well as look at the development of the pyramid itself. Before the pyramids, Egyptians had been burying their pharaohs and high officials under mastabas. The word mastaba, meaning bench, was a one-storey rectangular building with a flat roof and slanted sides, constructed out of mud bricks. A mastaba contains a chapel above ground where family members could bring offerings, a false door where the deceased was believed to enter and exit the structure, and a second hidden chamber called a sadab, which holds what is known as the ka, which is basically a statue of the deceased. It was believed that the soul could reside within the statue if something was ever to happen to the mummified body. Underground, there was a burial chamber, which contained the sarcophagus, where the dead was laid to rest. Also, within this chamber was anything the deceased may have wanted to take with them in the afterlife, such as jars of food, incense, or any other personal objects. Leading straight up from the burial chamber all the way to the top was an air shaft. This was yet another way that ancient Egyptians believed that the soul of the deceased could enter and exit the tomb in the afterlife. The early mastabas of the first and second dynasties had been discovered at the sites of Abydos and Saqqara. To explore the first pyramid, we need to go all the way back to the third dynasty, which lasts from 2650 to 2575 BC. The pharaoh credited for commissioning the first pyramid is Djoser. He reigned at the beginning of this dynasty. Now, there is some debate as to whether he was the first or second pharaoh, depending on which king's list you go by. Either way, Djoser is responsible for what is known to us today as the Step Pyramid, named because of its step-like structure. Djoser's pyramid rises to a height of 204 feet, and as far as we know, the largest stone building on earth at that time. However, credit should also go to Joseph's master builder, Imhotep. Imhotep seems to have been the master of many skills and bore many titles. As well as an architect, he was a scribe, a priest, an astronomer, a doctor, and even a treasurer, as well as holding many important government positions. He was even worshiped as a god long after his death. However, his ultimate achievement was the Step Pyramid. Djoser decided to build his tomb at Saqqara, and modern analysis show that originally it was a large mastaba. However, on completion, the decision was made to build three more mastabas on top of each other, stacking them to create a four-step pyramid. Once completed, ambition kicked in once more and it was decided to enlarge the base, expand and add two more mastabas on top, turning it into a six-step pyramid. Unlike later pyramids, the stone blocks used were modestly sized, which enabled each block to be carried by a single person. Underground, there was a series of corridors, rooms and doors. Here was where Joseph's mummified body was laid to rest, along with provisions and items he chose to take with him into the afterlife. Around the pyramid, a massive mortuary complex was constructed, with temples and courtyards for rituals to be internally performed in the afterlife. Some Egyptologists argue the pyramid represents the primeval mound of creation, which was what the Egyptians believed to be the first dry land to emerge from the sea, whilst others argue the pyramid shape was just the evolution of stacking mastabas on top of one another. In the case of the Step Pyramid, the first pyramid in Egypt, it is certainly true that it began as a mastaba and then became a pyramid. The Step Pyramid was a major achievement and still stands today, but more importantly started the ancient Egyptians on an obsession with pyramid building. However, building tombs on such a massive scale came with a huge risk. Each pharaoh, when deciding on the size of his pyramid, would have to consider the question, what if I died before my tomb was finished? Of course, the larger the tomb, the greater the risk of this happening. 
and that's exactly what happened to the next two pharaohs of the third dynasty, Sekhemket and Kaba. Sekhemket's pyramid project is known to us today as the Buried Pyramid. As its name suggests, it was completely buried when first discovered in Saqqara. In fact, due to his short reign of about six years, the construction only got as far as the base before the project was abandoned. By calculating the size of that base, Egyptologists tell us that this was likely to be a seven-step pyramid that would have surpassed Djoser's if it had been completed, but it was not meant to be, and the project remained unfinished. His successor Kaba suffered the same fate. Only two steps remain today of what has become known as the Layered Pyramid. Again, another short reign of about six years left this pyramid unfinished. Both pharaohs gambled on large construction projects and failed due to their untimely deaths and their ventures remained unfinished and unused. The last pharaoh of the third dynasty was the pharaoh Honey and he must have been well aware of the failures of his predecessors. To make sure this didn't happen to him, he decided on two things. First, he built a series of small ones, no more than 10 to 15 meters high. And second, these small step pyramids were not tombs at all. In total, he built eight small pyramids, snaking their way along the length of the country. So, if these pyramids were not tombs, then what were they? One theory, is that they were symbols of the pharaoh's authority, marking the extent of his territory, and a reminder to his subjects that they resided within his domain. In order to build massive pyramids, what you need is an ambitious ruler willing to take that huge risk and think not just big, but enormous. And the next dynasty was not short of pharaohs willing to do just that. The fourth dynasty is at the beginning of the era known to us as the Old Kingdom which later Egyptians regarded as a golden age. This dynasty begins at around 2575 to around 2450 BC. And it is this dynasty that built the greatest pyramids of them all. It truly was a massive family enterprise. The first pharaoh of the fourth dynasty was Sneferu. And he was the pharaoh to take pyramid building to the next level. He decided to build his pyramid at the site of Maidum. Sneferu constructed the Maidum pyramid with eight steps, and it surpassed even Djoser's in height. This pyramid was the first to have its burial chamber within the pyramid itself, as opposed to underneath. The challenge was to ensure that the ceiling of the chamber could take the weight of the stone above it to prevent a cave-in. The solution in achieving this was to construct the ceiling with stone blocks that got close together as they rose, creating an A-shape, which would distribute the weight accordingly. Once the eight steps were completed, Snefru then made an attempt to turn it into a true pyramid by using limestone casing to smooth the sides. However, the casing was not sufficiently anchored into the pyramid. Whether it began to slip during construction or sometime after, Snefru realized that the structure was unstable and would not hold long term. Therefore, Snefru made the decision to build a second pyramid. No sarcophagus was ever placed within the Maidun pyramid, as it was not used for its intended purpose. Today, what remains of it is its inner core. So, it was back to the drawing board for Snefru and his architects. This time, he decided to build at Deshur, and his goal was a geometrically true pyramid. Learning from the mistakes made at Maidun, much larger casing stones were used and they were much better anchored in. However, although the casing was successful, he then encountered an entirely new problem. As the pyramid reached about halfway, cracks started to appear within. The reason for this was that the corners of the pyramid were built on unstable ground, unable to take the weight. Emergency measures were implemented, including extra blocks of stone at the base, cedar beams to shore up the ceilings, most importantly, however, to reduce the weight of the pyramid, the decision was made to reduce its angle. The result was that the pyramid became stabilized. However, it also reduced the height and gave it a noticeable bent look. Today it still stands and it has become known as the Bent Pyramid. Ever the perfectionist, Snefru commissioned his third pyramid. Again, he built this one at Deshore, 
most likely to save time as he already had his workforce there and he could finish the bent pyramid as he began the new one simultaneously. Sneferu's architects had learnt from their failures and this time they built at a much reduced angle. When it was completed it was the first true smooth sided pyramid. In the end Sneferu's perseverance paid off and he finally had his resting place. At that time with all its casing stone still on it would have gleamed white. Today however it has become known as the Red Pyramid due to its reddish sandstone used in its construction. But most importantly, the Egyptians had learnt the knowledge needed to build true smooth sided pyramids and Sneferu's son and successor, the Pharaoh Khufu, would use that knowledge to build the biggest pyramid of them all. The site he chose to build on was Giza. It was perfect. The bedrock was solid enough to take the weight needed and there was plenty of stone nearby to quarry. Also, at that time, the Nile flowed right by Giza, so any additional materials and supplies needed could arrive easily by boat. Khufu's Great Pyramid was massive, rising an astonishing 480 feet. It would be the largest structure on Earth until the Eiffel Tower was built in the 19th century. There are a number of chambers and corridors within it, starting with the subterranean chamber below ground which remained unfinished and was probably where Khufu had initially decided to be buried. However, he must have changed his mind. Then what has become known as the Queen's Chamber, which was also empty, the Grand Gallery and the King's Chamber, which contained the sarcophagus. This was where Khufu was laid to rest. There was also a number of air shafts. One theory is that these were made so that Khufu's soul could exit the pyramid and reach the heavens above. And the systems of chambers and corridors within make it the most complex pyramid of them all. It is a testament to just how far the ancient Egyptians had come since the first pyramid was built just over a century before. We even know the name of Khufu's chief architect, Humwenu, who was a member of the royal family. Today, Khufu's pyramid is known as the Great Pyramid of Giza the largest of them all and represents the apex of the pyramid building age. Khufu's son and successor de Jeffre decided to build his pyramid elsewhere, five miles north of Giza. Unlike his father's however, de Jeffre's did not last the ages and today it's in ruins. His main significance is that he was the first pharaoh to adopt the god Re within his name. Not to be confused with Horus who I have mentioned in previous episodes, Ray was another hawk-headed god, a sun god, and during the 3rd and 4th dynasties, his popularity and importance within Egyptian religion and society was on the up. He was one of the most worshipped gods in the Egyptian pantheon. De Jeffrey was succeeded by his half-brother Khafre. He chose to build his pyramid next to his father's on the Giza Plateau. Rather craftily, however, he chose an elevated spot so that although his pyramid is shorter by about 12 feet, it gives the optical illusion of appearing bigger. Today, it is often referred to as the second pyramid of Giza and is one of the most recognizable, not just for its size, but because it still retains some of its original limestone casing at its top. Khafre is also credited for the construction of the Great Sphinx, which guards the Giza Plateau, the face of which is thought to depict Khafre himself. The Great Sphinx is also a massive construction project in its own right. 66 feet high and 240 feet long, carved from the existing limestone left over after quarrying for the pyramids. Khafre's son Menkure was the last pharaoh to build a great pyramid on the Giza Plateau. Smaller than his predecessors, it does however complete the complex. Today it is still standing and is known as the third pyramid of Giza. So let's look at the Giza complex. Each pyramid has a valley temple, a causeway leading to a mortuary temple before the pyramid. The temples and causeways were probably used for the rituals and ceremonies performed during the funeral process and the continued worship of the pharaoh as a god afterwards. The pyramids also have smaller sub-pyramids next to them. These were for the queens. We also find these boat pits at Giza and Egyptologists have managed to excavate and reassemble what we refer to as Khufu's solar boat. 
an indication that maybe Khufu had a passion for boats. Giza became a desired burial site for high officials of the 4th and 5th dynasties who were still constructing mastabas for their tombs. Egyptologists have also discovered a worker's town. The workers were free men, the majority of which were farmers conscripted when they were not working the fields. These guys were the real builders of the pyramids, the guys that cut the stone and dragged them into place. The workforce was split into gangs, and competition between these gangs flourished in order to drive productivity. We even know that one gang called themselves the King's Drunkards, and they sound like a lively bunch. The ancient Egyptians of the Old Kingdom believed that their pharaohs were living gods, and it was that divine authority and sheer determination that could pull together Egypt's rich resources, manpower and exceptional logistical and organisational skills needed to construct such massive projects. However, construction on this scale was simply not sustainable long term, and although pyramid building would continue long after, never again would they build them to the enormity achieved at the Giza Plateau. The pyramids at Giza have captivated wonder and astonishment by those that have stood in their presence for over 5,000 years, and still do to this very day. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.